Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my video and today videos, sorry, and today we're carrying on our Leicester City career mode. We got a tough tough game here in the EFL Cup that I'm gonna visual sim for you guys. Then we've got a West Brom game and then I'll probably also play the Wolfsburg game. It might be a long episode, but hopefully I, you guys will enjoy it. I'm just gonna show you quickly what I've done in the youth academy. I've just specified each uh youth player to a different development plan as you can see there's sweeper 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 keeper wide back ball playing inverted some box to box some players like that and so i i didn't actually notice this kid was actually pretty good this goalkeeper 62 he's definitely got the potential to go all if, if i click on him there actually you'll see how pretty decent his stats are 70 diving there most things in the 60s positioning i'm up i'm upping that a little bit uh so hopefully he can be one for the future and then but before that before i start thinking about the future at all we're gonna visual sim using our b team because I, the carabao cup isn't really a requirement of mine obviously it'd be nice to go quite far into it but fixture congestion and all that i'm not sure whether i'm gonna want to actually be in it late stage especially considering it's not one of my objectives either so we're going to get into this visual sim against liverpool hopefully it's going to be enjoyable for you guys i've got decent they're going with their full strength squad apart from maybe chamberlain and milner maybe maybe they're maybe uh like henderson and things are injured and cater maybe but hopefully we can get a win here. Uh, it's going to be di very difficult, especially against a near full-strength Liverpool squad. Who's on their bench, by the way? I don't know how to check that. Oh, yeah. Here. I'll just see after this Liverpool attack. Ah, uh, what a save. Shh. Ward it is, actually. Oh, they've got, they've got Henderson on the bench, along with Lacazette. Thiago as well. So decent players on the bench there for Liverpool. But we're under the cosh early on here against Liverpool and we get the shot away, it's blocked. And my players get it out. But they've won it back again. They're, they're really putting me under the pressure after 17 minutes and lose it again though. I'm, I should have probably played... Oh yeah, Wes Morgan is playing anyway. Alright, that's fine. He's the captain, Wes Morgan. So... We might be able to bring it forward here. It's got on one of our f one of our first attacks after 26 minutes. It's not going to happen. It's going to be broken down. Though. Ah, oh, they've scored. Sadio Mane scored near post, and we've fallen behind to a decent Liverpool team. Their energy is going down pretty fast. So hopefully, come the end of the game, we can capitalise on that. But hopefully, we don't concede any more. Um, if we get like a penalty or like a free kick then I'll probably jump in and if it goes to penalties if we manage to get a draw it will go to penalties and if it does I'll jump in there and just play the penalty shootout so you guys can see some interesting stuff there and we find an equaliser Ian Acho before half time four minutes before half time Leicester City are level and can you quite believe it some of the Liverpool players are on half energy now. Are literally about to run out of energy. That is half time. Our one chance, our one shot has been tucked away. As we're going to resume this game. They've had 59% of the ball dominated in all departments, really, Liverpool. Uh, yeah, that's looking decent already. You can see their tactics clearly pr press after possession loss. Milner. So that's probably why they're winning the lots of the ball back. Ahead, Is there a chance for us to go in front? Gray, Gray out wide two. Kind of uh, <laughs> Look at them Liverpool players' energy, or some of them Milner. in particular. And, the keeper can gather. Uh, and it's really cleared so out by Ward only as far as the man but it's got to be a free kick offside indeed there 
as Liverpool bring it forward again. If it stays 1-1, one, one, I'll be happy because it'll be a penalty shootout. And I, and I don't, I don't mind playing a penalty shootout. That's going to be pretty fun if we can hold on for a draw. But there's uh, about 20 minutes left now. And it's managed to be cleared out there. He's put into the penalty area. Ward with a good save there. I'm just going to take some players off and put some good penalty takers on, like Jamie Vardy. Obviously, I want I want him on. Uh, Madison's also a decent penalty taker. He could come on for Chowdhury. I'll change the formation just to go a bit more. I want a four. 3-3, three, three, but I'll have a 4-3-3 three, three attack there for you guys. Uh, Mendy, stay on. On Didi, I will want to bring in Didi on. Let's bring in Didi on for Mendy. Okay, right, so. Hopefully, it'll either stay like this or we'll grab a goal. Hopefully not Liverpool, but they brought Henderson and Thiago on for... Oxley Chamberlain and oh they've taken the lead what's the surprise I'm just going to jump in for you guys just to try and see if I can get an equaliser with not long to go 10 minutes hopefully we can get back level I'm not really sure whether we're going to be able to Vardy out wide oh it's in the field Alexander Arnold out there Ultra attacking for these final seven minutes plus added time. Come on, boys. Come on, Leicester. Find the equaliser here, please. Robertson. Hope to Roberto Firmino. Why is he playing out there? I'm not sure. Luckily, it's come to Dennis Pryor. Or unluckily for... Well, Liverpool, Dots, he's offside, he's offside by a whisker, of course, when we would have certainly found the equaliser. Virgil van Dijk launches it up, oh, of course it's kept in by Thiago, this is just putting me in a little bit of a bad mood for the rest of the episode now, because he scores so late. Oh, is there still chime? For us to... Oh, what a bad pass. It's absolutely shocking. Oh. Really peed me off there. But I don't mind too much. Obviously, they did dominate in all departments. So we probably deserve to lose, to be fair. But until 10 minutes to go... With 10 minutes to go, it was level. So I'm really annoyed about that. <coughs> That's round four as well. So there's only a few teams left in it. The likes of Newcastle and Fulham still in it as well. And Plymouth, gonna go all the way, are they? They're into the quarterfinals, I believe. So, unfortunately, we knocked out the Carabao Cup. But it, it will free up some fixture congestion. Because we have got tense Europa League games as well. I'm not gonna manage Greece. Greece are a bit of a bummer side to manage. I'm assuming... We're already at this West Brom game it's in quick succession. So we've played 10 Premier League games already this season. We find ourselves third in the table, joint top, but our goal difference isn't the greatest. So before we get into this game, I'm just going to save it up for you guys. Definitely don't want to play my B team either. So we've got our first team on. I'm just going to start this timer again. Again. Oh, what am I doing? This time has gone a bit stupid. I want zero hours, 12 minutes. Play. Sorry about that, guys. A bit annoying. They've bought Luke Ayling, as you can see. Uh, and it, that's who I hate teams that line up with five at the back it's just so annoying but a team like West Brom definitely beatable can we move to 25 points after 11 games and it'll be pretty good just while we're loading into the game I just want to give a quick shout out to my cousin's channel and also someone that he shouted out who's got a pretty decent channel uh, Alfie 
I'm not sure of the channel name, but it's it's Alfie YP or something. Alfie P Y T, I think, for YouTube. But uh, also my cousin's the channel also got some quality Arsenal career mode out there, quality content. Jamie Vardy scored 15 goals. After one more goal, he's already halfway there. We've already played 10 games. So he's looking like a decent shot for top scorer. And for breaking the competition record all in all. 15 goals in 10 games although it might only be 9 games for him alright Madison Vardy gets us underway gives it to Madison Tielemans and Ricardo Pereira early on here 1 minute played ah we've lost the ball it's Halloween as you can, you might have been able to hear the commentary. It's probably not though. They said they've been talking about the strikers ghosting in at the back post. So scary, and you never want a striker ghosting in at the far post to tap a ball home. Hopefully, we can get a win on this spooky night. Halloween. I can tell you, a goal has been scored at Old Trafford. Who has scored that goal? Alan McAnally. Cleared out and DD. Manchester United take the lead. Corona. Corona gives them the lead. Manchester United. I think. I, think, I can't remember who they were playing. It's cleared out. Manchester United obviously probably won't. I want them to lose that game unless they're playing another top of the table team. Well, Derek really getting to this serious end of the season. The pointed end, as I like to call We could finish it. top come nice the end of today. The in the bag. Let them chase what's happened there? I don't actually know what's happened there. To be fair, let's have a look what happened here. Was it offside? I don't actually know. This is probably the best angle. It came off the crossbar. I'm not actually sure that it was offside. I don't know what happened there. As you can see there, it's just teleported. And the keepers bounced it out, but it looks like it was offside in the end. Group stage action for you to look forward to. Ah, uh, it's a bit weird there. West Brom could have taken the lead, but he's either offside or he's handballed it, is my theories. Cl close call, definitely, though. Uh, if he wasn't offside, that would have been goal line technology, but I don't think it was in. Oh, Ricardo Pereira loses out to Diang. West Brom started positively here despite being underdogs. Obviously, third V probably one of the worst teams in the division Indeed. I'm gonna put it that way Here's and Tielemans really loses out well it's poor pass in the end Diang back. moves back in the field has so much know-how. Lee, what do you expect we'll see from him? Well, Derek, how do you stop him? Very difficult. Tielemans plays a Dharma down the wing. Back into Tielemans. And then he's going to give it to Madison, who tries a long shot. Well, an edge of the box shot, let's put it that way. But he gets it in his grasp. John Sam Johnston, after diving for the ball. Um, Pereira, good header there, off to Cuyate. Phillips out wide. The um, ball into the area, you. Pereira deals with it. Pereira is probably one of my better players. Uh, he's the second best rating rated player attack. on my team, behind Leader Jamie Vardy, of course. And I think my cousins might be buying him the on his Arsenal down. career mode. Might be, I say that. Um, I think I think he rates him quite highly after watching my career modes, actually. So Harvey Barnes brings it in field, and loses out. Is that? Oh, I thought Newcastle might have taken the lead there against Liverpool, but why now? Them against his former club, I think, gives Liverpool the lead away at Newcastle at St James's Park. Thirty-seven minutes. Gone, half time approaches. Evans out. After Soyuncu couldn't quite get it out. 
so tight this game. Who's going to break the deadlock? Be brave, be a hero. Take chances. Harvey Barnes offside there. Oh, what? Offside. We've had one shot on target. They haven't had a shot on target. They have had 51% of the ball. I've had 49. So it's been pretty much neck and neck with, with few opportunities really for either side i think it's only that uh madison shot that was easily saved by St. sam johnston that was the only shot on target all game so far but jamie vardy's played in behind and it doesn't take us long when you got jamie vardy on the end of a ball there we go and it, what a three ball that was by i think it's tielemans well, is it Telemans with the assist? I'm not sure, but that's, that brings his tally to halfway of the uh, competition record. And this is only his, I believe it's only his 10th game. Might have been the 11th game, though. Because I, I think I played my B team in one of the uh, games. Uh, I'm not sure, though. So, okay, that's half time. We scored just on the stroke before half time. As you can see, Ivanovic there is going to be disappointed at halftime with his team conceding after it's been pretty much neck and neck. So, I'm very, I'm very uh, excited to see how my midfield three are going to pan out. Tielemans obviously 23, 24 years old. Madison the same age as Tielemans, 23, 24. And then Ndidi, 24 or 25 now. Uh, and Didi's 85 rating and Madison and Tielemans about 82. So I'm very excited to see how that them three are going to pan out in the future. Johnstone with the save, tips it behind. I think that's the second goal for Liverpool uh, in their game away at Newcastle, St. James's Park. <coughs> Madison's going to swing in a pretty perfect delivery considering it was out swinging. I'm not really an outswinging man. I prefer to swing it infield. Harvey Barnes couldn't dip enough. I went for one of them absolute screamers that he scored before. Now Ivanovic. At half time, I was saying he's going to be disappointed, and now he's injured. That's not going to help him either. Uh, Barnes could have played Vardy through, and then I've been fouled by Ivanovic. I should have played Vardy through, but James Madison, I don't know how good he is at free kicks. Why is it not letting me put any spin on it? Didn't let me put any spin on it. A bit disappointing there. I'm a bit disappointed by that. Oh, surely that's a foul on Vardy. It stopped him running behind. But no foul. Still remains 1-0, and I'm happy with the lead... I can't really complain when you do have the lead. Just in front of Jamie Vardy, Johnston creeps in there. Sam Johnston. He hasn't done too badly, although I haven't had too many chances. 30 minutes to go in this game. Indeed, he don't lose it. Gives it to Madison. He lays it off to Harvey Barnes. Justin. I've played it down there. I don't know whether Harvey Barnes is going to get there. He isn't. And I've managed to deal with it. Phillips. Kuyate. Lays it off to Kuyate. Over the top. Is it going to be a good ball? No, it's not. It's going to skid away. And it's going to skid away for a goal kick then. Manchester United took a two-goal lead. Jesse Lingard. And as they... Are beating now Brighton at two the right goals to nil. Uh, they've got at home against Arsenal. I seem to think every team I play, their next fixture is always Arsenal. It's a bit weird. And Luke Ailing out wide now. West Brom bought him off Leeds. If you haven't watched my Leeds team review that I've just done today or yesterday, depending when I post this video, probably. Um, Go back and watch that. So I've got some. I, th I think uh, I'm happy to say it's a pretty decent video, especially if you're a Leeds United fan. It might might be helpful, or if if you want to start, if you if you're thinking of starting a Leeds career, it might just help you out before you do so. But back to this game and 76 minutes on the clock. They still are looking for an equaliser. Could that be it, Michael, with the save? 
as it is cleared out. I'm just going to see if my timer... There's one minute left on my timer, so I might be able to finish this game before timer runs out. Fuchs is coming on for Justin. Time for the change now. Don't worry, you won't, you won't miss any content because I've set it for 12 minutes well, and the maximum is 15 minutes. So I think you'll find I've been pretty sensible when I'm doing that because it gives me three minutes to save it up. Tielemans is not through. He's not got quite enough pace there. Definitely more of a passing man. I have just done a Leicester team review as well earlier today or yesterday, uh, depending when you're watching this or sometime in the future. I have done one of them and... Obviously, it's not going to be much different to what I'm telling you in this career mode about my squad. But I, get, I do give some recommendations on a, cu a couple of position signings you might want to make. And that's probably what I'm going to do in this career mode, to be fair. 88 minutes on the clock. It looks like we're going to pick up the three points, especially considering we're on the attack now. Tielemans to Vardy. Can't quite get it uh, through. Can't quite squirm it through. There will be three three minutes, minutes of added time. The is there a chance for one more West Brom attack? No, there isn't. Is there a chance for one more attack for me? He's laid it off to Tielemans. Through to Madison. Just a bit too far for him. A poor ball in the end. Ailing. All right, that's my timer going, guys. I'm just going to reset it. Right, so I've just reset my timer, guys. And I'm back, so... We do get the 1-0 victory. Uh, it's poor from a goal difference point of view, but any three points in a game is helpful. This is the goal that separated the two teams. The great ball through from Tielemans, and then the easy finish, really, for Jamie Vardy there. So, we get the victory... And hopefully we can move on to the Wolfsburg game now. And Newcastle did get a goal back against Liverpool, but that was it. No more fairy tale story from their point of view. Liverpool do end up beating them. So we've got this Europa League game. It's going to be the th fourth Europa League game. What's this progress assessment? As discussed with yourself before the current season began growing the club financially, represented an important target at the club at this moment in time, it looks unlikely that we'll be able to meet that target. I'm going to go and check this objective out because I really don't want to get sacked for you guys. Sell two players and sign two crucial players to replace them. Finish the season without any unspent transfer budget. Without... Without any unspent transfer budget. So I've got to basically use all of my money, which I'm definitely going to do at uh, the, what's it, at the halfway through the season in the January transfer window, window uh, because I don't know why I'm keeping this kid. He just looks pretty good, to be fair. Not, not, not great. I mean, 37 years old now. It's not the best. Look at his skill moves. Five-star skill moves on a 37-rated guy. You don't really expect that. But, yeah, because I'm thinking about buying Ismail Assar. I'm not sure whether that's going to be a good signing or not. And I don't know how much money I'm going to have to need for that. But, as you can see, my budget... Um, 37 million. That should probably be enough. Seeing as though Watford are in the championship now. I'm just going to go ahead and change that because... Actually... I'll play my B team against Wolfsburg. I did manage to get a win with my B team against Wolfsburg. Uh, so hopefully we can repeat that. It's a bit weird how the Europa League group stages are set out. Because the last the last game in the Europa League was against Wolfsburg. As you can see there, Burnley three days after this game. So it's a good job I am going to play my B team. And they they're all look pretty rested, to be fair. None of my B team are... Uh, low on energy not on not on played last game so they've got a decent squad but last time if you, if you watch the video what why is our stadium called the leicester city stadium it's really weird 
But we're going to get into this game against Wolfsburg. No, no, I think it is called the King's Power Stadium. I think it just might be a glitch in the Europa League bit in particular. Because I only ever see it in the Europa League bit, really. So we're going to get into this game against... Good save there. Not quite there, Ward. Oh, Kand again. What's he doing? What's he playing at? Good save there, though. Again, I'm just going to get into this game. I don't really want, want to really use your guys' time any longer. Uh, okay, so they've said something about guaranteeing our place in the Europa, in the Europa League knockout stages, which probably means if we get the win, we're in the Europa League group stages. I think we're on nine points after... Yeah, I think we're on nine points after three games. That's three wins. So 12 points is pretty much enough anyway. Well, well, 9 points is probably enough considering I beat Wolfsburg. But if I could beat Wolfsburg here, I'm pretty sure I do guarantee myself a place. And then I also probably strengthen Roma's place. But, you know. That's gone out of play there. Four minutes gone. I, I didn't actually know there was that many young players in the Leicester squad, but but I found that out just earlier um, when I did my Leicester City review. I didn't know Amati. You know Amati? He's only 25. I thought he was in his 30s, but maybe not. And then there's some also some other players. That's a great ball in behind on oh, no. him. No, it's not. Uh, defender manages to get there just. And Babu gets it out. Yeah, as you can see, 9 points, 6 points, 3 points and 0 points. Venlo, Venlo there on 0. They're, they're pretty much out of it. Uh, Roma on 6, Wolfsburg on 3. So if Wolfsburg get a win, it's probably going to be neck and neck between them and Roma. But I think if I can get the win or if I get the draw and Roma win, then I think that really does strengthen uh, Roma's position. And I think they're probably through as well. They're on six points. If they get the win, they move to nine points. And that's probably enough, especially if I can beat Wolfsburg here. Dennis Pryor. Good build-up play. And then to Iheanacho. I think it's deflected wide. But I, you could see that briefly in the top corner. You could see it briefly in the top corner. I manages to spot it. But Roma have taken the lead away at Venlo. Venlo really aren't having a great season. Although I, I think I beat them 3-0. But the game was closer than... The scoreline suggests did in that game. That was the first Europa League game I played. And I think it might be the next one after this. I think I've got Roma last. Oh, I'm not sure though. Vekos into the box. It's not dealt with properly by Morgan and Stefan's through. Ward comes out. And it's a good save in the end. Mendy Foots tackled by Mbabu. Mario Gray was there. It's put through again. Ward once again smothers his body well. He's been pretty decent. Pretty so far in his B team. Alright, second goal for the visitors. As you can see there, Edin Dzeko grabbing the second. I'm not sure who it was that grabbed the first. He was on the screen for a very brief period of time. What a tackle for Fana. Not giving a pen quite rightly. What a tackle sliding back there. I, th I think he's only like 21 years old, so he's got time to grow as well. I think realize Hamza Chowdhury is not that old. So there is quite a few young players. I'm not saying they're good. I'm not saying they'll easily make it onto my first team. But but if you see my midfield three in my, in my first team, and then you've got like Soyuncu and Harvey Barnes. He's such a young team apart from Jamie Vardy, really. Everyone else is pretty young. And I'm probably going to bring in Ismail Assar. Another young signing. Is that a handball? Maybe not. Dennis Pryor into Hamza Chowdhury. Takes the long shot. And I thought it might get quite close there. And it did go quite close. But Kaskis is tall enough. Just to move across. And make it look like mincemeat. Nacho, poor shot first time. Adwis, we're now seven minutes away from half time. Um, so I'll save it up again at half time, and then that'll be the last time you'll hear me save it up. 
because each half is probably around well it, it's i put it on four minutes a half but then every time the ball goes out of play it kind of stops what's amati doing there so each half is roughly around five six minutes so each game is probably around 10 to 12 minutes probably around 11 minutes i pressed the tackle button that's a bit disappointing but because they didn't get near the ball it ended up pressing the shoot button there for me so we're at the King Power Stadium and it remains nil-nil. I did beat Wolfsburg at their stadium, so if if I could do it again here, that'd be that'd be guaranteeing my position. As you can see, there are not in the Europa League, but our next fixture on Sunday, November the eighth. Is it November the eighth? Yeah, it will be. Well time tackle. That's half time. It remains nil nil at going into the break. Yes, I'm a little bit disappointed, but with my B team. My B team is actually really good. Well, I think I've played my B team in all of the um, Europa League games. I might have played my best team against Roma. Oh, no, I don't think I did, did I? But. In that case, I'm not disappointed at all because my B team's played pretty much every game in the Europa League. And they're, they seem to be doing pretty well in it. Well, when we get to the knockout stages, I'll probably play my um, B team in the first leg. And then if I'm losing in the first leg... There you go. Oh, it's 3-1. I thought Venlo had, might have leveled then because it's... Th but because it was 2-1. But Jeco manages to get another goal. He's looking pretty good despite being quite old now. Oh, it's kicked it out. It's a decent kick out, actually. We managed to keep the ball from it. Dennis well, Pryor. Right in this first half, but not everything. Well, it's not been a great first half of football as far as he's concerned. Raycross brings it forward. Me, oh, that's a that's a lovely ball over the top to Stefan. Played in field for Farnes there though, and that one's Ward's got it out. Is that not a free kick? Apparently, it's not a free kick, and Marankovic, just as. The commentators were saying he has a bit to improve in this second half. He manages to slot it home. I don't know why this wasn't a free kick, really. That. I don't really know what Fafana did there if it's not a free kick. But you could say an post glitch. But I think I think we've played pretty well. So I don't really know why we've gone behind there. It's a bit disappointing. I don't think we deserve to be losing. Spinazzola grabs a fourth there, I think, for Roma. Yeah, they do. And that's just strengthening their goal difference. So, unfortunately, we're in a lose. We find ourselves in a losing position here against Wolfsburg. That's a good turn by Ian Acho. Has he got the pace? He has got the pace. Castiles with the save. Dennis Pryor puts it back into a dangerous area. And Ian Acho, it clips the crossbar as it goes in. It was chipped back in towards him. And he manages to grab the goal. Who wants Jamie Vardy in the team? Because he's not getting in. Because he's not going to have another look in. No, I'm kidding. But Ian Acho, did that clip the post or the crossbar? I think it clipped the post, actually. Second time of looking at it. Yes, it did. In off the post. But who cares? What an accomplished header and an accomplished finish. And that, that is actually only... I'm actually going to go and save this up now. And then you won't be able to hear it ever again for the rest of this episode. It's actually buzzing now, so... So, let me just reset the timer, just in case. Just in case... It... I managed to drag this out long enough. But he shouldn't be able to, I shouldn't be able to. So so next game for me is Venlo because Wolfsburg uh, are at home to Roma next game. So that, So whatever the result there, if Roma win, I am guaranteed to go through. But I'd like to do it this game preferably. Although I'll take a draw definitely in this game. Chipped it out to Amati in field to Hamza Chowdhury across the pitch. Well, it's come down to the final 20 minutes here. Fuchs. Mendy. To Mendy. Well, not I tried playing it out to, to Diamari Gray, but didn't work. Arnold on the ball. 
brings it forward. I've actually got Arnold in my FIFA mobile team, but you don't really need to hear about that because we're on actual FIFA. This is actual FIFA. Way better than FIFA mobile, in my opinion. And if you're watching this, you'd probably agree. Otherwise, you'd probably be watching FIFA mobile vids, to be honest. Now, Iannaccio. Iannaccio plays it through Dennis to Dennis Pryat. The man of the match last time out, I think for me, just loses the ball there, unfortunately. I might start bringing on some of my better players to see if I can grab the win and secure our position in the knockout stages. Although, 10 points probably secures it anyway. Um, if I get a result out of this game, I'm definitely playing my B team. I don't know why I wouldn't play my B team in the final two games anyway. But I definitely am. Oh, and it looks like I might get a second. Iannaccio. Oh, good dive to ca for Castillo. And he manages to keep it in his hands as well and then launches it up the pitch. And they have the ball. Zav Zaver. Xaver, or what, however you want to call him. Five minutes to go. I think they just said Slaver. But I'm not really sure. Unable to make the mark with that cross. No nonsense clearance. Maybe a little fake shot out wide to Chenks under. Fake shot back infield now. Time is tight. Dennis Pryat in at the time. 50 seconds before the end of the game. And that might actually guarantee. Because Roma are winning. That might actually guarantee Roma's. Uh, position in the knockout stages actually I don't think it will but the goal difference is so high I think it will pretty much anyway but who else apart from Dennis Pryat the absolute magician of this B team he everything that good happens in this B team goes through him and we have the lead in added time here and that is that we guarantee our place in the knockout stages now because they're now they're now nine points behind us with only two games to go so they can only get an extra six points and if we win next game i think we also guarantee our top uh, our top position but i'll take 12 i'll take a uh, 12 points after four games definitely of course but, guys, that is where we're going to end it for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. A couple of wins. Uh, and also, getting knocked out of the Carabao Cup was disappointing. But also, a win against West Brom. And a win to secure our knockout stage. Uh, to secure our place in the knockout stages of the Europa League. Uh, but, obviously, next episode, guys, which might come out either today or tomorrow probably tomorrow now but if i get time tonight i will make another episode so away against burnley next episode and at home against chelsea so away against burnley will probably be tough and home against chelsea of course is going to be tough but chelsea haven't had the greatest start so what i'm gonna actually go check the premier league table before i leave you guys oh come on um we'll see whether chelsea have recovered and I don't know what they have. Oh, they've, rec re they've recovered slightly. I think they've picked up another three wins on on the on in the bounce on the bounce there. They're they're up to twelve. Leeds sit at the bottom with one draw and ten defeats after eleven games. Fulham also three draws and eight defeats after eleven games. Although West Brom haven't actually done that bad this season. Three wins, three draws, and five losses. It's not too bad. They're only two points behind Chelsea. If you go up to the top of the table where we are, we sit in third place, level on points with Spurs and Liverpool, but with worse goal difference, as you can see there. Manchester City, one point behind us. Man United, one point behind us. Uh, uh, but West Ham are quite far, seven points behind us. So, uh, by the end of next episode, guys, we could be down to fifth, but we also could be top of the table. So, it's very close for their top five positions up there uh arsenal and chelsea obviously two shocks well maybe not less so arsenal but chelsea definitely still underperforming you've got to say so that's where we're going to end it for today's episode guys if you don't mind smashing the like button also smashing the 
subscribe button for me. Uh, turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Tell your friends about this channel. And I, uh, it's much appreciated. So until next time, guys, thank you for watching. And I will see you later.